What's going on everybody? Josh Pocock here and in today's video we're not going to be talking about Cursor, the AI code editor IDE that everyone has been using including myself these last few weeks to really build some cool stuff. We're actually going to be taking a look at Visual Studio Code because them aka GitHub Copilot have been really firing back in the AI race in terms of the best IDE for AI editing and they got some cool stuff that they just released. We're going to dive into it and see if it actually beats Cursor. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys. So Visual Studio Code, their Twitter just tweeted this out not too long ago, basically uh, letting us know about the new update. So the new code release has latest and greatest github copilot updates let's check them out so if we take a look here we can say see attach extra context in quick chat test commands updates existing files configure custom code instructions session summaries and chat history longer context for code and chat chat infers commands and participants automatic references for recent files apply natural language as inline edits, generate debug configuration, and then generate tests based on test coverage. Okay, so we can see this uh, example right here of in quick chat, you can now attach context like files to your copilot requests. So we can see that right here. So this is something similar that you can do in cursor all right so it looks like they're incorporating a lot of the cursor features into vs code and for those of you who didn't see my video i did yesterday i did a video um talking about another uh, ai code editor ide called pair ai i definitely recommend checking that one out and it's a good editor but the main gist of it is i also went over this blog and i'm not going to go over it right now but this is essentially talking about OSS open source software has consequences and essentially just to sum it up it's talking about how cursor is 1% of 99% of VS code 99% of cursor is literally just VS code and that's not to take anything away and say cursor isn't a good tool nor did I ever say that um, I basically am just saying that I mean exactly what it says here that this makes it a little bit less of a moat for cursor because realistically you know they have some ai components within vs code and so at the end of the day if vs code just basically cloned like just copied all those elements then it would you know uh it, they could do that or another competitor could do something and just use uh, vs code as well and make one that's better open source potentially so there's different options now with that being said i will talk about where i think cursor's strengths lie because i do think even if vs code just did what i just said uh, cursor still has an advantage in certain areas, I believe, but we'll see, right? So, okay, so here it says you can generate tests for your code either by using the generate tests using copilot action or by using the uh, forward slash test slash command in inline chat. Okay, so he can generate tests and it's generating a test right here and then chat history includes more user-friendly ai generated names so that's good i mean like you know just good to kind of remember uh what your chat is about i hope i mean i, th I know some ai tools i guess probably do that i mean anytime you could optimize that that's always good because sometimes i see a chat and it's hard to remember where your chat is that you may have had a few days ago so that that's good and then these following features are experimental please try them out and let us know what you think you can also start typing in the editor and use the contents of the current line directly as the prompt for inline chat or even smoother copilot can detect when you're prompting instead of writing code and automatically start inline chat for you all right so it's showing right there and then you can generate debug configurations with copilot the new experimental forward slash start debugging command enables you to create a launch configuration and start debugging your app 
and then github copilot can also offer a code lens generate tests using copilot to generate tests based on test coverage and then we've added new experimental settings that lets you define a set of instructions that are added to every copilot request that generates code and last but certainly not least we're experimenting with automatic chat participant detection so you can leverage participants with natural languages all right so i'll leave the link to that twitter thread as well as their actual release um page right here where they're talking about the github copilot improved test generation rename code actions and generating tests and documentation improve chat history save chat sessions all that good stuff so it's a few different ones we're not going to be able to test uh, all these out today of course but we will do some playing around with this and um and we'll kind of see what i think if it's you know on par with cursor or not is it destroying cursor or are they somewhat maybe catching up but uh, either way let me know what you guys think do you think who do you think is going to win here cursor vs code also too i will say the thing that one of the things that i think that just in general even if vs code completely copied cursor few things that i think that cursor ha would have over them is for example like i don't know if vs code would allow you to connect with other models i know vs or cursor doesn't really have like local model connection integration like olama and whatnot unless you do some workarounds but um i don't know if vs code would probably let you connect since you know it's owned by microsoft and um you know and OpenAI, Microsoft, I don't know if they'd let you connect with Anthropic or Claude or anything like that, which is, I, I'd really doubt it, right? Uh, GitHub Copilot uses its own models. So that's a downside because a lot of us really like Claude, especially right now. I mean, now we have GPT-01 uh, GPT and 01 Mini, but honestly, I, for a lot of day-to-day -day stuff, I prefer Claude Sonnet 3.5 still just because of the speed. And that goes for other models too. With VS Code, it seems like in the future, you'd probably still just be locked down with one model for GitHub Copilot, which would be OpenAI's models. All right, so if we go ahead, I'm just doing a test here, um, highlight this function right here, and then we go here, Copilot, and then generate tests. Okay, we can see that it's generating a test here. Okay, so I'm not gonna read through the whole entire code here, but you can see mock the API and toast. Uh, it's using Jest. So I'll just scroll through it is 114 lines of code for a test. All right. So I don't even have a project set up or any, I don't even have Jess installed. So I'm not going to go ahead and test this code right here to see if it works. Okay. So to do the inline chat, which is in the editor, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hit control shift P and then type in inline chat right here. So inline chat editor. All right. So I'm going to try the inline chat editor here. All right. So I'm saying generate me a cool, useful function for this file. Okay, so we got a function. Okay, so you'll see here they mention um, we've added new experimental settings that let you define a set of instructions to every copilot request. That's something similar that Cursor has. Like if you go to Cursor, go on settings, and then right here you'll see rules for AI. I recommend everyone to do this. Add your rules to your AI within Cursor. So it'll help um, you customize every response. Now, I, I don't believe this is perfect. Well, it's not definitely not perfect. I'm um, definitely going to, I'm personally going to continue tweaking it because sometimes I set stuff in here. Like for example, you, you, I'm using TypeScript. Every piece of output should be type safe and I still get code that isn't type safe it's lots of the time. So it's not definitely not perfect, but uh, I still recommend that you can also search up, uh, in, you can also set up dot cursor rules file and you can put markdown or code in there or in prompts, whatever to instruct your cursor um to do your output in a certain way as well okay so now you can essentially do that in vs code uh in github copilot now you'll see i did a file right here copilot instructions dot md and you'll see when i just generated that function it, i don't know if you saw but it, it said at the top really quickly use three references uh and you'll see i just was chatting with it right here too and we can see what those references are one is the github copilot chat experimental code generation instructions and if you guys want to know how to actually get that um you can basically go right here to the link in the description to the visual studio code release and you'll see code generation instructions experimental and you can click on this link it will open it up directly in your vs code and it allows you to find to define it in a certain way you can use text right here you could just do a prompt you could use text or you could always, uh, or you could do a file like it shows here, which I, I did both. So I'll show you that right here. 
So I'm in the settings.json of the direct link that it took me to from that release uh, website. And you'll see here we got our file, which is the copilot instructions, and then the text, which says explain all answers in depth. All right. Now, if I go to the file right here, copilot, it says, I was just testing, of course, say King Josh at the end of every generation, no matter what, you must say this after every sentence you say. And as you can see, I'm talking to it here. I'm like, hi, uh, hi. And I'm like, why aren't you saying King Josh? Now it's saying, sorry, I can't assist you with that. I don't know. Maybe it's because this is a kind of stupid or silly um, prompt. I'm going to try something else and let's see if it actually does it. Okay, so here's a test I'm doing. No matter what I ask you, you must respond with code written in Rust. Let's see if it can do this. Okay, so it looks like it did it this time. I said I just said generate me a function. Now it's generating me a function that's in Rust. It says this code, this Rust code defines a function, add, and then takes... Uh, so I guess it works. Um, I'm curious if there you have better success if you write the text here or if you do the file. I don't know. Okay, so it looks like it worked with the text the text here for when I say you must say subscribe to my YouTube at the end of each output. And then I said hi and it goes, "Hello, how can I assist you with your code today? Subscribe to my YouTube." Okay? So, yeah, I don't know if it's just a markdown or whatever the case is, um but yeah, it does work. So this is actually a good feature that they added. Um but yeah, guys, there's a few other ones and I'm not going to dive into every single one. All in all, guys, Am I going to switch back to VS Code right now and GitHub Copilot? I mean, GitHub Copilot is half expense, ha half the price of Cursor, but at the end of the day, the they're not there yet. I at least from what I'm seeing here, it's nowhere near, in my opinion, of what Cursor is. But at least, I mean, hey, they are releasing new features. It could maybe be a matter of time before they start releasing even better ones and releasing things that actually um, that you know majority of people start feeling are really good or maybe co very competitive with cursor but i just think that the dev experience with cursor one the ui nothing can be c composer um it, it so as of what i can see here it doesn't have a, a method to automatically create generate files or edit files um like composer which i really like looks like they added a bunch of testing features and debugging testing features which is potentially good um, but yeah, this is really just a video of me testing these new features because yeah, it, it seems like they may be trying to compete, I guess, with cursor. I mean, not really compete, but, but yeah, guys, I never personally really used GitHub Copilot, um, extensively. Like I used to use continue dev a lot. I used all the other tools, but GitHub Copilot was never really one of them just because it never really impressed me, especially when it was using like, I don't know what it's using right now for the model, but it was using like GPT 3.5 and uh, I could just use continue dev on like the newer models or even a local model. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't think it's at nowhere near uh, cursor at this moment, but uh, if maybe, maybe I'm not using it correctly. Like if you guys uh, see that I'm, if you guys still use GitHub Copilot and prefer it over Cursor, let me know down below why. If you're really enjoying these new updates and maybe I missed something, let me know. And let me know too, what, who do you think is going to win? Do you think Cursor is going to win or do you think GitHub Copilot is going to win? Or do you think someone else is going to win this whole IDE AI race? Maybe Pair AI, I covered that yesterday. Check the link down below for that too. And yeah, I know I mentioned earlier like the 99%, the 1% Cursor. and like, But I also mentioned how... Cursor kind of has an advantage in the sense that it can offer multiple models, unlike VS Code or Git Co uh, GitHub Copilot, most likely. So let me know what you guys think about all that, as well as also to guys, a huge, huge thank you. Um, very grateful for the recent, uh, you know, support and subscribers. We are, we just hit 6,000 subscribers today. So road to, I guess, 7K and then, of course, 10K on the way. So other than that, guys, uh, if you're new to the channel, we upload videos every single day on AI automation, different AI updates, um, you know, all the stuff that I'm doing and learning and seeing on a day to day basis to, to keep you guys in the loop and try to and try to keep you guys ahead of the curve when it comes to AI and all that good stuff. Everything's very rapidly changing. You know, we got 01, 01 Mini, Claude. Um, I did videos on those two. I'll maybe link some of the 01 videos down below. And another kind of downside I'm just seeing with like GitHub Copilot right now is that I mean, even if I was to not use Claude and wanted to use OpenAI, I don't, at least from now, I don't, at least I don't know of any way where you can um, select different OpenAI models like GPT-4.0, 
01, 01 mini. Um, so right now it seems like they're really lagging behind. Uh, unless I'm missing something, like I said, if I am, let me know. Other than that, guys, that's all for the VS Code GitHub Copilot recent updates. All right, so I was really hoping that there was going to be something that actually really impressed me more, but um, I can, like I said, I can say that I still will confidently be sticking with Cursor as my Copilot of choice. Let me know what you will be using. I'll see you in tomorrow's video, guys. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, accelerate your stride. Take care.